to his inner voices there is only friends he drives the woods at night feeling free he's got moves like aristotle One hand, sorry, on the throttle. Oh, it's what rhymes with Aristotle? Feeling free. Now there's a light shining from the mountain. There's a light showing out to sea. It's a reminder. What do you call? Free. That's where the cross is when you're in the south. There's crosses lit up everywhere, especially in Appalachia and all the. Not the know, crosses on the oh, side where of the people road. People died, died in Iraq, road, yeah. right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> He's like a wild animal, pure So I always like to lighten up a tone because that's one of my real sad ones and uh -huh. I love it. But uh -huh. so I'm gonna play you a funny one I just dug up in my uh Nothing's been the same since then. to start of a song for me yeah but i think it's because it's so fascinating i picked this line up you know in like 94 or 95 and it was coming because scandinavia they really broke with the boston area was all these kind of nerds that really they buy besides the military we know at this point you mean the military in Silicon Alley, yeah. right google but they were the ones that were making up all the chat rooms and all the different you know coding languages and stuff once it went out to get it because we had this incredible time for a while george if you were into the internet in 95 it was totally open source yeah you didn't yeah. have search and Google, all this stuff kind of going you know i mean i'll have days where i'll do a search and all i'm getting is the same thing over and over from yep. google sure but then the big thing for a lot of us was go to duck duck go right well google was right around the corner they bought it you know yeah Anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, oh yeah. No. So I want to finish up, let's finish up this little part with, this is a song to our Canadian side, because we all got that. This is a song that people I sing this song for, it's always, it's real patriotic, but in a beautiful way, because it's uh, about um, a young man during the French and Indian War in Canada, that he had to leave to come to the United States. It's a very old song written in, uh, well, I think that was like the 16, maybe it was 1710, no. but it was uh -huh. like 1690. It was just a little, the French and Indian, because stuff was going up uh, in Canada <clears throat> with, uh, with Plymouth Rock in the big direction. Sure. They had already been established right, right there, okay? Right. So in other words, it's like, from what I've been told over the years, and the source material I get on it before I talk about it too proudly, it's around 400 years old. And I'm going to sing it in the Quebecois instead of trying to sing it in Parisian French. Okay? Sure. It's a beautiful song and sure. it's meant to be done in Quebecois, which it's, a, in other words, an idiomatic, right? Riff and I wouldn't know the difference between but those two languages. Be, but. Well, idiomatic, like the vernacular, like me saying, I'm going to go and right. Right. get that for you, George. You know, instead of I'm going. Mommy spent my whole life trying to get me to stop saying gonna. <laughs> going to carry Gonna going. wanna. Yeah. Okay. Brevity. So we do the buys. Next language, yeah. yeah. Now, if you guys feel anything with the harp. Okay. The harp's not working. 
the hard stuff. Oh, you get a little something. You gotta feel it. You gotta feel it, man. go to Canada, you know, you're always, and even if you take 90 now, you know, <coughs> to Berlin, you see those red tin roofs start. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. And you smell that smoke, you know. Yeah, and you think that's an old, old song? From oh, it is, I got ago. it off an Ian Sylvia album. Ian and Sylvia. And I used Great to give Canadian. the attribution until we mm. had the internet, and then I did a search before I was going to do it in a crowd. I used to do some crowd gathers on the streets in Roslindale. And yeah. You know, I put a notice on all these people. They love to do that. Yeah. And come and learn to yodel, and then I'd sing them. So uh, I did the research on that one, and I found out it was like 7,000 recorded versions. <laughs> wow. It's been popular in Canada wow. and tra yeah. shown from father yeah. to son. It's a real tradition. Where were you doing the yodeling? Roslindale. You know, that beautiful little community. Outside of Boston. Outside okay. Boston. Oh, uh -huh, cool. Yeah. Oh, I've done yodel. I, Yodeling came after that came then. after the opera. Opera first, then Yodeling. Yeah, no, no, no. I learned Yodeling from a lady that was a psychiatric nurse at the hospital they committed Lee to. It was called Southbury Training School. Her name was. Who's um, Lee? Lee was my singing partner. Okay. We we were a band called Hook and Ladder. Okay. From who you went to Woodstock with? Right, she's okay. the one I went yeah. to Woodstock with, gotcha. and we went to Spain wow. together. And yeah. The Rosicrucians told her to sit down. Yeah. You're an old soul. You don't know, need to know. And so through her, you learn the yodeling. Wow. Yeah, when well, she brought me to, yeah. to uh, Smitty, yeah. <clears throat> this beautiful lady that had come up in the Blue Ridge Mountains, and she told me she spent several weeks working with me. But, you know, yodeling is something you got to get alone. I mean, someone could show you, but you got to practice throwing your voice. Yeah. You're doing breaks. No, actually, when I, so yodeling became a real, when Lee and I had hooker and ladder, they loved, we'd do a few key, like, that's what you get for loving me. We had some, like, Gordon Lightfoot songs. Mm -hmm. We had some, we had a song, Hey Rushka, yeah. My Marushka. We'd put a, a kerchief on, 
She had all her teeth taken out when she was like 19 from doing heroin, you know. She had falsies. Mm -hmm. So we'd start on the legal of gorgeous, you know. We were always decked out with cleavage mm -hmm. and makeup. But we'd put this scarf on and start plunking away. And then she'd get the guy to just kill the light slowly and the lights would come up and there'd we'd be without her teeth. And I'd be singing, <laughs> hey, hey, Rushka singing, my, and we'd be dancing and the crowd would go nuts. It was just so great. We were like this little uh, Boston, New York City cabaret scene thing, like the sophisticated mm -hmm. They were real into Greenwich it for Village. A for a while. Yeah, it's, yeah, it was very Jewish. Yeah. No, Greenwich Village. Yeah. Greenwich Village. Well, Bob we Dylan's the, the hot era, the 60s. We're, the hipsters. Yeah. When were you doing we that? We played at the so, bottom. Yeah. We got a gig at the bottom line, yeah. which I didn't enjoy. Maybe you've heard of the bottom line, yeah. but it was a big deal in those days. Yeah. Yeah. Which I didn't enjoy. Because they kept, I mean, I won't say it was as small as this table, the stage, but some of the places <laughs> they'd have you stand up on would, well, let's put three of these together. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, I'd have to figure oh, out a way, you know, you'd get yeah. right up by the other person and you're. Because they were cramming 